All right, folks, we have an important milestone actually here for you. Um, I have officially surpassed uh, 1,000 recorded rounds for this uh, Rock Island 1911 here. So um, I wanted to take it apart and kind of show you guys um, the wear patterns um, that I'm observing on this pistol and kind of give you my impressions for the, the past thousand rounds or more that I've put through this thing um, to give people a kind of an idea of um, what to expect for, I guess, a more long-term longevity, long-term look at one of these things. Um, so we'll just get started and uh, take it apart. Uh, so as a disclaimer though, there are two things I have replaced on this pistol. Um, that is the actual trigger itself and the slide lock release lever here. I have replaced those with original um, Colt 1911 uh, GI, uh, very old uh, original pieces to put in this pistol because the ones that came with this pistol were just so um, chintzy feeling, very cheap, and the, um, the particular trigger they had also stuck out a lot more than this one did. It was one of like the... Um, the different style of original triggers they had, there was this big piece that kind of stuck out much, much further um, into the trigger guard. And it had a fairly uncomfortable um, kind of serrated uh, trigger face that I didn't like very much. Uh, it kind of tore my finger up and it just wasn't very fun to shoot, so I ended up replacing that. As well, the slide lock release lever that these things usually come with are um, the, the surface here for your thumb or other control hand, finger, um, is much, much smaller and it has a kind of box checkering on it that I found also extremely uncomfortable and not easy to manipulate. So I replaced it with one that I'm used to uh, and that is the original style kind of large flange with the um, horizontal lines on it and that just fits and works a lot better for me because that's what I'm used to. So those are the only two things I've replaced on this gun. Oh, and obviously the grips too, but um, I mean, these are these are more reminiscent of the original ones that these, um, you know, the original GI guns that it came with. So I wanted to replicate that original look rather than having the smooth kind of cheap wood that these usually come with. So anyways, let's take it down. Now this has already been safety checked and everything. Um, I actually did wipe this down uh, to kind of reveal all of the surface wear and wear patterns that this thing should be having. Um, I have not oiled it yet though, because I wanted those um, those wear surfaces to really, really come out and show themselves. So I'll just take it apart here. Okay. So as with um, all of the 1911s that I run, uh, I run a recoil shock buffer on the spring here. Um, now, are these entirely necessary to operate your 1911? Absolutely not. You can run 1911s just fine without them, but I have always run my 1911s with these and I've never had issues with it. And I like to think that it prolongs the, um, life, of the sur uh, life of the firearm and uh, reduces uh, parts, breakage and wear and that kind of thing. Um, I have not noticed any any holdups or um, bad timing of the pistol. Um, another pistol I have, the, uh, the, the Regent High Power Clone, uh, when I did put a recoil buffer in that, it, it screwed that pistol up, something fierce. So um, 1911s, at least for me, seem to be pretty unique in um, the pistols that I can operate these buffers in. Uh, I have not seen any other pistol that really works with those too well, but with 1911s, they definitely do. Um, yeah, these, these buffers tend to last, uh, I'd say minimum 500 rounds, but I've seen them break earlier than that as well. And this one is in kind of rough shape. I don't know if that'll come up there on the camera, um, if it'll focus at all, but it has, uh, it's already starting to crack and kind of chip and break a little bit there. It's not focusing, but let's see if I can get that. No, it doesn't want to focus. Well, anyways, you'll take my word for it. Um, it is basically etching and eating into this um, kind of rubbery, kind of whatever material it is, plastic rubber, um, which is the entire purpose of these uh, buffers. Uh, you can buy them from Wilson Combat in big packs of like 12 or 24 or whatever, and they're super cheap. So um, I usually replace these whenever um, I do an inspection cleaning of the gun, 
and I see that they're basically falling apart. This one probably has about 100, 200 rounds left in it before I need to replace it. So um, nice little low cost piece that I think adds a lot of value to your gun, but uh, are absolutely not necessary to maintain or run a 1911 effectively. So I will say also um, out of the entire 1000 rounds that I've had through this gun, I've had exactly zero malfunctions because I maintain and operate my 1911s as they are supposed to be maintained and operated. So um, all of those memes out there and the jokes that's saying you know, 1911s jam all the time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's probably due for a lot of what I would consider obvious reasons, but uh, improper maintenance, improper handling, improper um, magazines, ammunition, people messing around with the tolerances, putting all kinds of aftermarket parts in their guns, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of things that can mess up a 1911, but the simple fact that I am able to operate and maintain a literally like one of the cheapest 1911s you can get and run a thousand rounds through it without any issues whatsoever, uh, that is a really a, a testament to the design that if you make them correctly and you operate them correctly and you maintain them correctly, you don't have any issues just like pretty much every other pistol known to man. So. Just wanted to put that out there. So anyway, let's get to the parts. So we'll start with the frame here. Um, the frame to me doesn't have any really unusual wear, to be honest. I really don't know if a lot of these wear patterns are gonna come up all that well on the camera, to be honest. Um, it's not really that great at picking up fine details, but um, there is, uh, let me see if I can get like a, I'm gonna point at with here. I really wish I had one of those uh, plastic pokies that CN Arsenal uses. That's uh, really handy, but I do not, so we'll settle with this brass rod. So, um, all along the rails here, you can see a lot of wear right there. That's to be expected, especially with this kind of like phosphate finish. Um, it, it's, it's to be expected. Nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary, nothing that, that surprises me. And you can see it also on the same side here. It looks to be even across both sides, so that's a good sign. Um, on the hammer, uh, hammer strike face itself, you can see the pattern here where it's been striking the back of the slide. Um, totally normal, as to be expected. Nothing out of the ordinary there. The uh, feed ramp area and the locking block action down here, or whatever block that's called. Um, typical wear there as well, no big deal. And in the recoil spring channel, there is nothing. So. Uh, Pretty typical, honestly. And also on the uh, where the slide lock release lever sits, there is very, very minimal wear you can see right there and also right there. Also to be expected because this piece is literally just riding on the side of the frame there. Um, no big deal. Um, haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary. Uh, I will say though, there is uh, a slight bit of discoloration um, that's taken place with this pistol since I bought it. Uh, the slide and the frame used to match uh, in terms of like shade of color, I guess. So here you can see, uh, I don't know if this will show up on in the lighting either, but to my naked eye right now, uh, the slide is actually a darker black than the frame. The frame is more like a charcoal gray. And you can especially see that discoloration with the um, the grip safety here, which is obviously made out of some kind of different material than the rest of the frame, um, but it is noticeably darker or blacker than the kind of charcoal phosphate finish of the frame, and that has uh, the frame has only gotten like a lighter, more charcoalish grayish color than the slide as time goes on. It didn't used to be that different, but um, the longer this this sits around, the more discolored it gets. So. I don't know if that's just a natural aging process or not. I've never actually had a phosphated uh, 1911 before. I've only had stainless, so uh, that's probably just a natural thing. I'm not really gonna worry about it, to be honest. Uh, until I start seeing like actual corrosion, rust, wear, pitting, excessive wear, uh, I'm not gonna worry about it, so. Okay, so that's the frame, the barrel, which I have not cleaned yet. Uh, the barrel doesn't show anything really that unusual. Um, usually the high wear spots you're going to see is basically right here on the top of the barrel, right here where it sits in the, um, in the bushing, and um, 
also underneath here as well. So basically any anywhere the, the, the slide and the barrel rides, you can expect this thing to have wear, no big deal. Um, I really don't see anything on this that would indicate uh, anything excessive or out of the ordinary. Um, you know, with, with this, like I said, with this type of finish, uh, it's very, very easy to see the wear patterns. Um, so that can be kind of a good thing as well. In case you're shopping for a used example and you see all kinds of crazy wear going on, you can kind of have a reasonable-ish um, estimate of the round count and how much use and abuse that particular pistol has taken. Um, you can also tell for a brand new firearm as well, um, just how much has been racked in the shop and things like that based on wear patterns for a finish like this. So, barrel looks fine. Uh, Ricoh guide rod also looks just fine. The usual wear patterns that uh, I'm used to seeing. No big deal, nothing excessive. Even uh, with the uh, shock buffer, no, nothing significant to report really. The um, Ricoh spring cap, uh, muzzle cap, this isn't really like a high stress part anyway, so um, nothing to report there either. Now the barrel bushing. This is a very, very important part for this gun um, for many reasons. But uh, usual wear patterns we can see here, just all the way around here, in all the usual spots that I expect to see it. No big deal. Um, yeah. No like chunks of metal missing or anything like that. Nothing extreme. No big deal. Uh, slide lock release lever also has quite a bit of wear on it because um, that's that's where all the magic happens. So uh, this piece right here just has a little bit of wear on the inside there and some of the finish coming off, but no rust or anything like that. Um, it's a little bit right here too as well, but uh, not really that bad. And like I said, this this is actually a very old um, 1911 GI part from my. God knows when, but it's, it is an old part. Uh, I bought it off of Numeric, and uh, I don't think they even identify how old these things are, but it is quite old, because um, when I got this, it already had a bunch of wear on it. So uh, the fact that it's not accelerated or really shown any excessive gouging or anything is kind of a, kind of a cool um, thing with 1911s, because as anyone can tell you, uh, well, as anyone should tell you, guns are not Legos, um, and for the most part, Parts were not meant to be um, a, a, as easy as just plug and play with, with zero modification whatsoever and zero expectation that there's not going to be some kind of break-in or wear-in for that particular gun with that particular part, especially if it's not original to the gun itself. So, um, 1911s are incredibly notorious for not being friendly to um, foreign parts. Uh, that's why a lot of 1911 parts have to be hand fitted for um, for just that reason. So uh, the fact that this piece has just kind of slotted in there and it's worked fine for me this entire time uh, is is uh, it's a, a welcome surprise to say the least. So and now the slide itself. So um, externally, nothing really significant at all to report. Uh, on the front of the slide face here, you can kind of see the, the very obvious wear pattern to where the barrel bushing sits. That's totally normal to be expected. Um, yeah, it, the, that thing is just slamming and slamming in there all the time. Um, high wear spot, no big deal. Um, on the inside, so this is uh, Rock Islands are uh, Series 70 style pistols, so they do not have a firing pin block like the Series 80s do. Um, some people say that contributes to a better trigger pull. I don't really notice a difference myself, having owned both Series 70 and 80 pistols. Uh, I don't really notice a difference, to be honest. So here, uh, on this part, you can usually expect a lot of brass um, to ride up on because that's, uh, that's where the rounds are being fed into the chamber. Uh, with a lot of these Browning style pistols, this is a very, very high uh, friction, high wear point because um, that is where the rounds are being fed in. Um, and I don't see anything unusual in here whatsoever, and definitely not in the channels on either side as well. No, no significant wear or anything like that. Um, can't really get it from this angle all that well, but the, uh, the breech face here has your usual um, kind of brass mark from the brass sitting in the chamber. Um, 
Also a very, very high friction, high wear point um, because it has to you know, feed into the action and, and lock up and then unlock and feed another one and so on and so forth. And that's where all the action happens and um, really nothing I would um, you know, not expect and uh, not see from uh, other Browning action uh, pistols that I own. It, it's, it's all common, expected. So uh, really just, it's, it's not really anything in here that is um, jumping out at me as excessive or different uh, to be worried about, which is a very good sign. Um, and another high wear point as well is right here within the locking lug recesses here. Also a very, very high, uh, high friction, high stress point in the gun, because that's the whole reason why this thing works in the first place is because of these recesses. So um, these are typically uh, pretty dirty, hard to clean. Um, I typically don't clean those out all that often because it is such a big pain. And honestly, you don't really need to be that that clean with your firearms every single time you fire them. But that's just me. Um, there is a bit of wear in there, um, as you can see in there, especially right here at the um, at the bottom here. Uh, but like I said, nothing excessive, nothing I haven't seen before uh, at this kind of round count, nothing crazy. So really um, very, very good showing, I think, from Rock Island Armory for a, they're, they're just bare bones, standard GI model 1911 that you know, a lot of people really like to rag on and kind of deride as being a cheap, unreliable piece of junk. But to be honest, I, I don't see that myself. I see a high value pistol for what you pay as long as you do your part and you operate it and maintain it properly the way it is supposed to be taken care of and operated, you'll have no issues. So um, st still stock recoil spring. Um, it's about as stock as I can get it, except for the trigger and the um, slide lock release lever, which should not really affect the operation of the pistol um, in any significant way. And it hasn't. So, uh, in fact, I had a, uh, I was just at the range recently and um, I was shooting this pistol for groups and accuracy just to see uh, how it would perform with different types of ammo. Uh, I, I test ammo all throughout all my different pistols, different brands. I test a lot of stuff. And I was getting on average at 20 yards, right around two and a half inch groups um, on average. So, you know, acceptable. Um, not my best, certainly, but acceptable for um, this kind of gun and especially for the <laughs> very rudimentary GI style sights. Um, you know, these are not very easy to shoot accurately. But uh, I was doing my thing and I had an older gentleman come up to me and um, retired Marine Corps. I can practically smell it off of him. And he said, hey, are you, sh are you shooting a, a Colt 1911? Is that a Colt you got there? And I said, oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's a Rock Island. And he's like, oh, it's a Rock Island. Oh, yeah, you could have fooled me. I thought it was a Colt because, uh, you know, your gun's not jamming and, and it looks really nice. And, and you know, it, it just works and you're shooting really good at, you know, 20 yards. I said, well, you know, it just happens to be a good gun. He's like, yeah, I've got, I've got like six Colt 1911s, and you know, Colt's the only way to go. And I tell you what, I, you know, I, I, I fought him tooth and nail to keep my damn 1911. I didn't want that Beretta, you know, piece of junk nine millimeter. You give me a Colt 1911 every day of the week. And I say, yes, sir, I agree with you. You know, I, I personally, I grew up um, shooting 1911s, so they're kind of near and dear to my heart, and I've always been able to shoot them pretty well. Um, and you know, he, he looked over at me. He's like, "Shouldn't a youngster like you be shooting like Glocks or something? What are you, what are you doing here with a 1911 and a Smith and Wesson revolver? You know, why do you got all that?" And I said, "Oh, you know, I just enjoy the classics, you know." And we proceeded to talk for a few more minutes and everything. But um, it is it is kind of cool that um, even though there are a million and one different 1911 manufacturers out there, this old timer who has been using 1911s since probably before I was born. Uh, mistook this Rock Island for a, a genuine cult. So um, that is, I think, another, you know, a, a testament to how, just how, how much of a value these guns can be. I'm not going to say they're nice because I have a nice Colt 1911 and this does not compare to it um, at all. But that 1911 is also from when uh, Colt was actually worth a damn. Modern Colts, no, no. Um, 
would, would not buy those with confidence, not even the 1911s, no way. Um, but anyway, we're, we're getting into different topics. So point being, um, I'm very, very satisfied with how this, uh, this Rock Island has turned out, has performed for me. Um, especially at the price point that I got it for. I think I paid like 350 or 400 bucks for this thing. Um, absolutely uh, awesome. And it's definitely fulfilling that very, very basic, no frills, um, GI model style um, 1911 pistol. So that way I can basically relive, uh, you know, what a lot of our GIs and soldiers were issued for, for, for decades on end and really get a feel and appreciation for it. So I, I feel like this comes very, very close to what they had back in the day. Um, if not, probably even better than what they had, to be honest. Uh, because, you know, this this gun has not been through um, untold number of hands and, and, and crappy maintenance cycles and soldiers who didn't give a damn. You know, the usual story of military weapons. But, um, yeah, very, very satisfied with how this is turning out. Um, you know, I've gone through a thousand rounds with no, no hiccups, no failures, no issues at all whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't believe all the, 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 the internet stories and hype out there that say that 1911s are notoriously unreliable and especially the cheap ones like Rock Islands that they're just gonna, they're just gonna fall apart and they're made out of, you know, shitty meme, uh, meme or whatever, the metal injection molded parts, you know, all these cheap parts and everything. It's made out of the finest Chinese, you know, it's just going to fall. No, it, mine has not shown any, any indication of doing that. It has worked just fine for me. Um, that's because I know what I'm doing with these pistols. So, uh, if you know what you're doing with these pistols too, I think they will in general work for you. Uh, are there going to be exceptions to the case, to the rule? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, every manufacturer has their has their lemons. Even HK, of all people, um, it is possible. So, um, yeah. Overall, very happy with this gun. Um, I don't believe the internet hype and, and trends and stuff when these, these so-called so experts come out and say that these pistols are trash. They're not. Um, do your part. Operate and maintain your weapons correctly, and they will work for you. I mean, that should, that should go without saying, but um, sometimes we forget the fundamentals out here about proper maintenance cycles and operation of these pistols and how to shoot them correctly. Um, you know, sometimes we need to be reminded of that. So uh, just keep that in mind. And if you're looking at one of these Rock Island pistols, um, at least this model, this variation, this standard GI model, like I said, do your part, operate them correctly, maintain them correctly. I think you will have a very excellent shooter for the money, um, you know, so far. So anyway, um, maybe the next 1,000 rounds I'll do another follow-up and, and um, see where all the wear patterns are at on this one. But to be honest, 1,000 rounds of 45 is kind of expensive right now. So, uh, and there's a lot of other guns I want to shoot 45 in, like, I don't know, my USP Tactical. So, uh, you know, it's going to take me a while to, to, to get another 1,000 rounds in this gun if I ever get there. But uh, I figured I'd bring this little, you know, 1,000 round update because a lot of people don't even put 1,000 rounds through their pistols, believe it or not. Um, it's definitely the case that I've seen and experienced and seen. So, um, yeah, I actually shoot the gun. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I've been going on far too long, but it's just a, a quick, uh, quick thousand round update for this pistol. And um, yeah, buy these with confidence. I think they're great for what they are. Um, they're not going to be super, super fancy and like blow your socks off amazing, but they are excellent value, I think, for the money and really what more can you ask for? So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. It's my thousand round update for the Rock Island uh, 1911 GI model. So yeah, hope that was helpful and uh, we'll catch you next time.